All right, folks, with great pleasure, more on this and some other things, let's bring in the great Laura Ingram, host of The Ingram Angle on Fox mm -hmm. News. Laura, it is always wonderful to have you on the show. Uh, what, Good what, to see what is Joe Biden afraid? Is Joe Biden afraid of Hooties? He's afraid of Iran. I know that. I guess he's, is he afraid well, of Hooties? What is he doing, if anything? Well, look, what I, th I think we can safely conclude, Larry, that after what we saw last week in Pennsylvania with President Biden sadly kind of meandering through the school and mm. uh, giving a speech that was really, uh, it, it was disturbing to watch as an American because he's obviously in such decline. The idea that Joe Biden is making any significant decisions is just ludicrous. So he's not making the decisions. Lloyd Austin just out of the hospital, but nobody even checked on him for four or five days. So he's not making the decisions. So I think that the really apt question today is, who is actually making the tough national security calls for the United States of America? Who is it? Is it, is it Ned Price? Is it, I mean, I think, is it John Kirby? I mean, it's, is it a cringing Pete John Pierre? I mean, I'm, I'm willing to take any uh, counsel on this, but we don't seem to have a cognizant commander in chief, from what I can tell. No, it's like, who's calling the shots in there? I agree with you. It's a question, uh, it's a very important question. The other thing, Laura, is um, in Taiwan, all right, the good guys won, the pro democracy group, William Lai. That's his Americanized name. He won. That's good. And then Joe Biden comes out with a statement that says, we are not in favor of Taiwan independence. Really? Oh, yeah. What? That's his really? That, that's his reflexive response, Larry, because Joe Biden has been doing everything in his power over the last 40 or 50 years to help China become stronger and more prosperous. Mm. And the CCP... They love Biden. I mean, he's, he's kept the Trump tariffs in place to some extent. In a second Biden term, those would be lifted for sure. But there's a reason that, you know, most of the, you know, billionaires on the left are, are they want Biden is because they want to keep this China gravy train going. Taiwan says, wait a second, we still believe we're a country. We want to be our own independent country. And for America to come out on the heels of this and say, oh, no, you don't. That was very telling. Blinken had to kind of clean it up a little bit, as usual. But Joe Biden's instinct is never to be tough on, and, on, tough on China as he is on, let's say, any random conservative in the House of Representatives. Yeah, I was going to say, right, or, you know, some pro-life Catholic church or... No, no, no. He'd throw the book at them, but, yeah. like, definitely not President Xi of China. Yeah, right. Some, some set of parents that want to go to their own kids' uh, PTA yeah. meeting or whatever they're called. No, you're right. Heaven forbid. Heaven forbid is right. Uh, so what's doing out there in Iowa? You know, it seems to me drain the swamp is a big issue. It seems to me... Uh, the border is a big issue. It seems to me the affordability crisis is a big issue. And also, Laura, um, I think Trump is dialed into the evangelical community a lot sure. more than people seem to understand. But you're there and I'm here. So what are you thinking? Yeah, well, I think this is my uh, seventh Iowa caucuses um, experience. And it's always fun. You always learn something about the country when you're here, Larry. But I think chaos, as far as the eye can see, is what just regular workaday people are, are observing in the United States. Their grocery bills, that Bureau of Labor Statistics report that just came out, shows that 100 bucks spent in, January, in December of 2019 costs now 125 in groceries. That's just real money to real people. I think what we're seeing in, in Ukraine, you know, we, we work to try to defend their border. That seems like it's, it's going south, or at least at a stalemate. Obviously, uh, immigration is a disaster. Most Americans do not want this, yet it looks like the establishment is trying to force a deal, which is not going to go well for any of, anyone who signed their name on this. So I think people see it's chaos, and I guess maybe they see that Trump has walked through this fire and he's still standing. Mm. Not a lot of people could probably do that. I know, Larry, you could, obviously. You, you could walk through the fire. We'd, we'd know you could handle it, but well, most people couldn't. I, so. We'll see who comes in number two. That's the big. Uh, that's the big one. And if Trump can get close to 50, that's all. That's off the charts, Larry. Well, you know, listen. You and I have been good pals for a long, long time. But when I worked for Trump, you know, he showed me, he showed me tough, but he also showed me calm. You know, make decisions. 
Uh, I think the same character traits are coming through in his campaign. I mean, he's running an issues campaign, but he's very calm, right? They're throwing the book at him, put him in jail for 700 years and all that yeah. business. And he comes out uh, with a terrific town hall, the Fox Town Hall performance um, last Wednesday night or whenever it he was. He was very calm. Yes. He was very yes. calm in that. And yes. he, he seemed so confident. Like, I hadn't yes. kind of seen him that way, like, on camera and quite a while. I mean, I don't watch every single thing, but I thought that was like a inflection point. I did too. Where Th he's like, I got this. I got this. Can I just tell you, I said the same thing. I called it a turning oh, point. This is why we're friends. We no, agree on everything. I, I, Most I, I, I called it a turning point. You were inflection point. You're smarter than I am. I like inflection point. <laughs> I, I, Hardly. May, I may have to incorporate it. But in all seriousness, what you just said, his calmness, the way he presented himself. Um, mm -hmm. And I just think that's paying off, Laura. You know, I, I think people see that. I mean, and of course, the other thing is uh, success is the best revenge. I mean, you go back to 20, when he won in 2016, he didn't go after Hillary Clinton. He didn't go after Peter Strzok and his girlfriend. He didn't go after Comey. He didn't. He didn't take any, there was no revenge. He was just trying to do a good job, which he, by and large, did a good job. I mean, I think well, you're right. he's got and the I right stuff. And I think the stuff. same message. Yeah, the same, same message. You know, he's still talking about some of the, you know, the personalities. But this, that message that Washington is deceiving you yes. and they're failing you. Yes. They are failing you. And the people get, they feel it. They feel it in their bones. And, you know, there's no messaging this away if you're the White House at this point. It's uh, missing in action. Leadership missing in action. And I think Trump said, you know, he's trying to say... Help is on the way, and we'll see who comes in number two tonight. Yep, you got it. So good, Laura Ingram. Thanks a million. Really.